Welcome back to a new episode. Today I'll be reviewing the Nord of Aids men's waterproof hiking mountaineering boots. Not only will I be discussing the features of this boot, but I'll be testing it in Costa Rica, so stay tuned to the fun demo section. The exterior of the boot is composed of a synthetic upper stamped in a hexagonal pattern. Don't let the looks fool you, the material is soft to the touch but strong. The thing that stands out right away to me is the precise station to seal the boot from moisture and air from passing in. I've done a full and careful examination, there has not been any loose thread in. Keep the statement in mind, it will be important for when I get to the demo section of this review. These boots don't have a pull on strap, which I would have liked. If your laces are a bit tight from the last time you wore them, having the pull straps would allow you to quickly snap your feet into the boot if you're in an emergency to get somewhere. It's not a big deal, but still a good feature to have in my opinion. The boots have a combination of metal eyelets which are found on the arch of the boot, plastic eyelets where the ankles are, and a tough nylon fabric between the metal and plastic eyelet sections. The topmost plastic eyelets are left unthreaded with the laces for a reason, which I'll explain later in depth. Let's look at the sole composition of the boots. It's composed of a rugged rubber outsole, which delivers exceptional grip and durability. There's the EVA midsole to absorb shock and impact, and a removable flexible insole for arch support. Combining these individual features, you have a product that is durable and slip resistant. The rubber outsole is more stable, slip and abrasive resistant, and shows a flexible response to the various outdoor terrain. On the bottom of the rugged rubber outsole is the multi-directional traction, which improves the grip on various surfaces. The traction is 0.635 cm deep, meaning you will have a lot of durability for numerous environments you wear them in. In the demo section, I'll show how the traction performs on rough, irregular surfaces in different climates. The laces are pretty strong and high quality, but just in case your excursion leads to you snapping them, Nordivay includes another free pair. The thick rubber toe cap is there to protect your toes should you accidentally kick a rock on the trail or trip over any rough and tough surfaces. The small but important feature has saved me so many times when I was hiking in Costa Rica. Surprisingly, despite my trips and falls, the toe cap has not torn or ripped despite the rough journey they've been through. The inner fabric is very soft and plush with a black and white zigzag pattern. While it's not visible, the boot uses a waterproof sock construction. This internal member keeps water out and has an outer foam layer that provides cushioning and warmth. The tongue of the boot is tightly sewn and integrated to the upper boot section, so even if you stand in centimeters of water or are outdoors during a windy winter day, neither water or cold air will enter the boots easily. I'm a big fan of the insoles of this boot. They're so bouncy and comfortable. In testing it, it feels like I'm walking on a thick sponge that won't quit. In Costa Rica, I've never experienced any fatigue or any type of soreness from hours and hours of walking. Having good insoles are important because they absorb the shock of the surfaces you're walking on and will minimize the vibration that can aggravate your knees if you have any sort of knee injury. Anyways, here's my favorite part of this review, traveling to Costa Rica. Support the channel by hitting the like, subscribe and share button. Making high quality videos takes a lot of time and effort, but the only way I can grow this channel is with your help. Feel free to donate crypto or money via PayPal. Links in the description below. And what better place to test the boots by hiking to the Blue Falls of Costa Rica. The journey to the waterfalls involved a path filled with large rough stones of various size and texture. Remember how I mentioned how the rubber caps of the boots saved me? It's very easy to stumble here and fracture the toes on a path like this, but I found out the boots handled this path exceptionally well. Crossing these metal bridges coated with water was easy work for the Nordivates. The traction on the boot did a solid job of gripping the slick metal, so there was no slipping or sudden loss of balance as I crossed to the other side. It's hard to convey through the screen, but I felt very secure with these hiking boots. Like, no matter the path I was on, 
I feet, thus my overall body would be secure. If you're not paying attention, you could roll your ankle on an odd shape with slick rock, but with these boots I could be distracted and not worry about injuring myself. I can't say the same of other people who I hiked with who wore running shoes. So let's do a quick status check. All that walking has covered the boots in dirt and dust, but that's about it. Even though the dirt conceals it, the boots are really tough and did not get any tears, rips or slashes on the hike to the waterfalls. Side note, I noticed that some people on Amazon reviews can be very rough with their boots and I'm not talking about the Nordivate specifically. These boots are constructed with some of the best materials available, but they're not indestructible, so do try to take care of them. I'll be making serious effort to keep them for years to come when I hike in other countries. A moment of silence to enjoy some of the beauty of Costa Rica. to my second hike, this time in Hako, Costa Rica. The cycling route entrance is located at the back of a neighborhood. You can hear a teen girl practicing the saxophone in the background. Costa Rica is really interesting. So are these boots waterproof? Without a shadow of a doubt, yes. I can't tell you the number of shallow to mid deep streams I walked and splashed through and I have not experienced water seeping into them. My feet were kept dry and warm the entire time, so the marketing claims for this boot holds true. No, I think he's just a local. Good. The hike was longer than what I've shown, but these shoes handled the jagged and water-filled terrain like a champ. Because I did go in water that I went up to my armpits, the Nordivates were flooded. So here they are at my Airbnb drying out so I can wear them on my trip back to San Jose. Also, the Nordivates are really easy to clean, so that's why you don't see any dirt on them. The waist-deep water cleaned them for me. I went for a historical walking tour in San Jose to see how the boots would perform in an urban environment. Thanks to the insoles and its open mouth design, each step I took on the pavement was like walking in somewhat heavy running shoes. Walking through downtown San Jose was a comfortable experience, and due to the insole with its arch support, I didn't experience any form of fatigue from visiting historical sites, murals, and public spaces. Since the boot has waterproof sock construction, I admit that my feet did get pretty warm. Fortunately, I had the boot in its open mouth configuration to allow heat to exit, but my feet would still feel noticeably warm. There's food, vegetables, butcheries, seafood chops, everything. Wow. That's crazy. Ah, yeah. Sadly, my trip came to an end and I had to head back to Toronto. The following section is testing the Nordivates in the snow and cold weather. While it's unlikely you'll be walking on icy wooden park benches, you never know. Jokes aside, I found that the Nordivate struggled on grip in cold, smooth, and icy surfaces. In terms of weight, these boots are kind of heavy and wouldn't be ideal for jogging in. They do grip the snow grass really well though, but just from jogging on the spot, 
the weight may add unnecessary pressure to your knees if you have that sort of joint issue. I previously mentioned in the Costa Rica section about the open mouth configuration to let heat out, specifically that the topmost eyelet was unlaced. Now it's time to change the configuration to closed mouth to stop the heat from exiting or at least slow it down. This transformation requires lacing the topmost eyelet. The problem I have with this is that the laces aren't long enough to fully tie into a secure knotted bow. This means that when you walk, the laces will unravel really quickly and you'll have to retie them again and again and again. Walking on snow covered surfaces is somewhat effective, but towards the end of the clip, you see that I almost lose my balance due to the ice under the snow. So let me be clear, these aren't hiking snow boots despite the rugged appearance and multi-directional traction, but I'm not saying this because I almost lost my balance on the snow covered ice. You see, these boots won't hold up to the cold like you see me here minus 14 degrees celsius weather. I'm wearing my thick wool socks, yet the cold penetrates it and the waterproof sock construction which had previously kept my feet really warm in Costa Rica. I believe that even the topmost eyelet being laced would minimize the cold from entering the boot, but it didn't. Let me be clear, this doesn't mean the boots are bad, they're just not made for walking in sub-zero celsius Canadian weather. The treads I already filled with snow already, but I didn't lose my balance around non-ice covered surfaces at the park. I was curious about how the Nordivates would perform on snowy inclines. With superb traction, it's easy to walk and quickly jog up the hill. However, coming downwards required me to cautiously sidewalk. As I previously said, the treads of the boots are filled with snow so you won't have the traction that are as strong as if you're walking on flat ground. In terms of driving with these boots, the thickness and shock absorption of the soles can make it initially difficult to gauge how much pressure you apply to the pedals. Remember, the boot soles basically have three layers, a rugged rubber outsole, EVA midsole, and a thick flexible foam insole. I found that I needed to add more pressure to the pedals because of these layers. Eventually you get used to it and won't think about it, but I think that if your vehicle has stiff pedals already, these boots may or may not be the best to drive in. Overall, the Nordivates are best suited for hiking in warm climates. The boots are actually waterproof when I was walking through the streams and creeks of Costa Rica and were comfortable strolling the streets of the capital, San Jose. The boots protected my feet from the rough hiking terrains to the waterfalls and never tore, slash, or ripped, even on a trip from time to time. Plus, I never rolled my ankles in them due to the high ankle protection. I like that the Nordivates have different configuration modes for different climates but at the end of the day, these are not meant for sub-zero temperatures of Toronto. The cold air will seep through the fabric and mouth of the boot, even if you lace the topmost eyelets and wear thick wool socks, leaving you with unbearably cold feet. I think the laces of the boot should be longer, so if you want to lace the topmost eyelets, you have enough length to even double knot the laces. If you like this review, give a like and subscribe, and don't forget to donate to the channel, and I'll see you in the next episode.